Good morning. How are you doing today? And I'm looking forward to uh, uh, spending some time with you in our devotions. And uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And let's see if we can see who's on here uh, this morning. And uh, uh, we're in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number three. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter three uh, this morning. And uh, it is a beautiful day. Almost thought about going outside and, and doing this, um, but uh, figured I'd wait a little bit longer before I go outside and, and do one of these so that way I don't get rained on. But Hebrews chapter 3, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining us this morning. We're going to be looking at verses number 7 all the way into uh, uh, verse number 19. And uh, um, hopefully you had a good weekend here. You're able to uh, go to church and, or I should say watch church. Uh, we, uh, we, we had a good Sunday at Victory, we had enjoyed having uh, Brother Mrs. Ping with us on the live stream, and uh, Mrs. Ping sang a beautiful special uh, Sunday night. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and then uh, we had uh, uh, just enjoyed a little bit of fellowship there as we were preparing for the service, and so uh, I, I enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed your time at church, and... Uh, um, we're going to go ahead and jump in Hebrews chapter number three, and uh, we'll start reading here in verse number seven. The Bible says, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with this generation and said, they do, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you in an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin." For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our conscience steadfast unto the end. All it is today, if ye uh, will hear his voice, harden not your hearts in the day of provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned? whose carcass fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he uh, that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And uh, Miss Alice, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And I appreciate that. Uh, as we've been looking through the book of Hebrews, the Common thread here has been that Jesus Christ is better. He's better than the Jewish uh, history. He's better than the angels that that were so revered and, and, and admired. He's better than Moses. Moses being one of the great um, foundation or fathers of the faith for them. And and now he is he he's kind of pivoting in, in his message here, and he's. He's talking about how the children of Israel have gone away because of one key issue. And it's an issue that plagues every Christian, every unbeliever. It's a, a uh, issue that plagues us as we walk by faith and not by sight. It's an issue that plagues us as we read our Bible or as we pray. It's an issue that plagues us as we... Uh, good morning, Brother Romy. Uh, it's an issue that plagues us as we... Uh, seek to serve God in every facet of life. And um, we, we move into verse number seven. And he says, wherefore? Now, wherefore is still piggybacking off of verse number one of chapter three, where he says, wherefore, which is piggybacking off, off of his uh, argument in chapter two. And so he says, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice. Now, uh, this is a, uh, a very powerful verse because the word today gives it some Im imperative uh, uh, notion. It gives us some uh, 
sense of urgency as we um, serve God. And I think it's important for us to understand that we don't have all the time in the world to serve God. We don't have all the time in the world to hear his voice. Uh, it can come in just an instant. And I see Brother Nate, thank you so much for uh, joining. And uh, Brother Philip, I appreciate you all the way from Uganda. And uh, uh, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Uh, we don't have that long. Uh, now, it's easy when we're younger, we can say, well, I've got time, I've got time. But if you've, if you've grown up at any length, you've noticed time goes by quick, doesn't it? I remember, uh, Nate just uh, signed in here. I remember uh, going to basketball games with Nate as we, uh, we were 16, 17, 18 years old, going to the gym to play basketball. I remember that and how that has gone by so quickly. Both of us married, have kids, jobs, and, and everything. Uh, that's gone by so fast. And uh, I tell you what, life goes by a lot quicker than we think. In fact, in the book of James, it talks about how life is but a vapor. It goes by so quick. And if we don't take advantage of the time and opportunities that we have right now, we're going to miss out on time and opportunity and how important it is for us. And what opportunity is he speaking of? He says, today, if ye will hear, how important it is for us to hear the word of God, um, and there's different areas that we can hear the word of God. Obviously, we hear the word of God when it's being preached to us. We hear the word of God when we read the Bible. But also in that still small voice as we're praying, as we're communing with God, we hear that, that, that voice of God speaking to our heart. And uh, just, just so you uh, have a frame of reference, when God speaks to us, he'll never go against his word. And uh, keep that thought in your mind, just so uh, some people say, well, God spoke to me and he said for me to do this. And it, count, it goes against the word that that's not God speaking. And uh, um, he says here that if ye will hear his voice, how important it is for us to hear his voice. And he says this, verse number eight, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Um, the children of Israel, with everything that they saw that God had done, everything that they were able to witness, they really had no excuse to harden their hearts towards God. And just think about it for just a moment. Think about every plague that they saw that happened in Egypt. And as God had spared their lives and as God had uh, uh, protected them and as God had uh, uh, provided for them. Think about as they as the uh, they celebrated the Passover, which was mentioned in chapter two, and as uh, as they put the blood on the doorpost and they saw as God showed them mercy and did not take that firstborn. Uh, just think about as they were leaving Egypt and as God protected them with the pillar of fire and the cloud that was there and opened up the Red Sea, allowed them to go through, collapsed the Red Sea on the Egyptian army. Think about all these things that they were able to witness, how they were able to see manna given to them on a daily basis so that they can eat and be nourished by God. Think about how God gave them water out of a rock and how he, he continually provided for their needs as they went on, how he protected them against armies that were way more advanced than they were. Uh, all these things are things that they should have taken to heart, but they didn't. And he, he says, uh, harden not your heart. And, and then he uses this in the day of provocation. Provocation has the idea of being tempted or being tried. Um, and what happens is when we go through something that seems overwhelming, when we go through things that seem difficult, here's our natural reaction. We harden up. Have you ever been going through some, court, some kind of type of stress? And you immediately isolate yourself, you immediately draw within yourself, you immediately harden up. You, you wanna know why? It's, it's preservation, it's self-preservation. It's, it's, a, it's a, a coping thing that we do naturally uh, because we just can't handle what's happening around us. And uh, uh, 
here he says, let's be careful not to harden our hearts when, when things get difficult. In the day of temptation in the wilderness, and the idea of being in the wilderness has the idea of being separated from our comfort zone, to be uh, alone or feeling alone. And uh, that, a lot of times in life, we feel that way. We feel like we're alone or, or we're just distant from anything that's going to bring us true comfort. And he says here in verse number nine, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. And I've mentioned all those works that their fathers had seen. And, uh, and, and yet they were seeing these great works done uh, as well. He says in verse number 10, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. Now there was a grieving that was happening because they did not trust in God. They did not yield themselves to God, even though they saw that God was trying to take care of them. He would be their God and, and they would be his people. And yet they didn't trust him. They didn't, they didn't yield to him. And uh, before we go on, I need to do a quick coffee check here. Uh, coffee check here. That's my, uh, that's my personality this morning. I don't know if you, about you, but I woke up just a little groggy this morning and I needed my coffee. Um, the, the, that generation, they did not do exactly as God wanted them to, mainly because of one area. And it says here in verse 10, they do always err in their heart. And they uh, have not known my ways. Brother Jude, good to see you here this morning. They err in their heart. And this is a, an issue. And I think it's an issue with, with, within Christian, uh, Christian life right now. We can do different things. We can, uh, on the outside, we can participate. We can, uh, we can look the part, talk the part, act the part. But God's not looking simply for the action. He's looking for the heart. The heart of the matter is the most important thing. And uh, good, good morning, uh, uh, Miss Millett. And Starbucks coffee, that sounds good, Nate. Um, I tell you what, the heart of the matter is the most important thing within the Christian life. It's the most thing, important thing within uh, uh, any relationship is having the heart. Even if actions fail, as long as the heart is there, that's the most important thing. And God says, look, I see, I see actions, I just don't see the heart. And uh, uh, good, good, Miss Bonnie, good to see you. And uh, uh, Miss Elena, sorry you guys had some problems logging on. Um, I think the uh, we got a new update on our streaming thing, our streaming app, and so it uh, makes things a little difficult. But uh, um, verse number uh, eleven says, "So I swear in my wrath." They shall not enter into my rest. Now, in chapter 3 and chapter 4, this idea of entering into rest becomes very important. This is a promise that God continually is bringing before uh, the children of Israel, that he's promising them to enter into rest, promising them that they, they can enter into rest, and then also saying, you can't enter into rest because of this issue. And he says here in verse 12, he says, take heed. Now, anytime the Bible says take heed, it's important for us to truly pay attention because he, he's about to tell us something that could be detrimental to us if we don't listen. And he says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, uh, any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Now, there are a lot of things in this world that are evil. Um, I think I think the uh, the materialism that we suffer from in America that's an evil thing. It causes us to become greedy. It causes us to steal. It causes us to take advantage of people. Uh, I mean, we're seeing we're seeing the materialism right now with toilet paper. I mean, in the stores. Come on, uh, it, people don't need to hoard all of that, but it becomes an idea of. Uh, 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 I have to have all of this stuff because it's going to bring me comfort. That's, that's an evil heart because it's, it's saying that this thing 
is going to bring me the comfort I need uh, in, a, in a trying time. Uh, you know what, what's evil to me? Uh, pedophilia, the idea of, of someone preying on children and, 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 and hurting them. That, that's an evil thing to me. Uh, completely wicked. Uh, what, what, what evil to me is watching as, as people are taking advantage of each other. Uh, that's evil. That's difficult to, to even see in stomach. And we're seeing it with price gouging and we're seeing it with um, just uh, uh, people's selfishness and self-centeredness uh, towards others. That, that right there is, it, 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 there's no excuse for that. But God points to something that really is the root of all those things. And he says it here in verse number 12. He says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. You see, the idea of unbelief is the most evil trait we can possess. Because if we possess this, uh, 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 this trait of unbelief, if we truly don't give ourselves to uh, uh, believing God and trusting him, we depart from the living God. And we, when we depart from the living God, we lose those attributes, so that, that fruit that comes with the, his presence. We begin to do things that are selfish. We begin to do things that, that take advantage of others. We begin to hurt people around us. We begin to, uh, uh, we begin to focus on, on our own desires rather than others. And it becomes, it becomes a me-centered uh, uh, philosophy. And he, he says here in verse number 13, he says, but here's, the, here's the, the, the opposite or the contrasting here. He says, but exhort one another daily while it's called today. You see, the, the comparison to living in unbelief is someone who looks to others to exhort them, to encourage them, to build them up. That's why it's so important for us to, to get back to the church house. Uh, I'm looking forward. I know our president just said yesterday in uh, one of his addresses that uh, he says that the social distancing will end April 30th. Hey, I am looking forward to getting back to church. Uh, this online thing, as as happy as I am that it's able to keep us connected, this is not the way God intended it. This is not biblical. We need to be able to be one with another and sharpen each other and encourage one another and, and to build up one another. That's what the church was established for. And, uh, and here he says, but we need to exhort one another daily. Now that we're not at the church house, how important it is for us as we're living our daily lives and in, in this uh, shelter in place situation, how important it is for us to look for someone else to exhort, to encourage, to build up. Well, daily, that ought to be our heart. And then he brings that imperative statement yet again. Today, today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And uh, uh, the, the children of Israel, their deceitfulness came in looking to uh, countries like Egypt that they had everything and they were so given to their materialism and they were given to all their gods and they were given to their immorality. And the children of Israel, that's what they wanted. They looked to those things and they said, you know, that sounds good. I want to be a part of that. I want to, I, I want, I want to uh, uh, live that lifestyle. And that was the deceitfulness of sin because ultimately none of those things really provided that rest that the children of Israel were looking for. And he says here in verse number uh, 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our conscience steadfast until the end. That word partakers, it was used uh, in chapter two as well. That The word partakers means that we get to take a part of the inheritance that's given to us. Uh, when I got saved, I became an heir to the kingdom. I am a child of God and I get to partake of all the, the blessings that comes with being a child of the king. 
I get to partake in his blessings. I get to partake in his provisions and his protection and the joy of the Lord that brings the strength to my day-to-day life. And if we hold fast to this walk, if we live daily in this walk, can I tell you something? We get to be partakers of this. So we're not driven to the deceitfulness of sin. We're, we're, we're uh, comforted by the blessing of God. And how important it is for us to, to live in this lifestyle, staying steadfast under the end. And he says in verse 15, while it is said today, once again, he mentions today. If ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. Once again, he reiterates the importance of hearing the voice of God. And uh, I think it's important for us to take some time and truly try to hear the voice of God and spend some time in prayer to the point where we, we... we get a hold of God, so when we read our Bible, it's as if he's speaking to us. This book is not simply a book of knowledge. It's a book of, uh, of love for us, for uh, our faith, and it builds our faith. Verse 16 says this, For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Now here he's drawing back to the children of Israel how after they left Egypt, after they were brought into the wilderness and they were headed to the promised land, God had to put a stop. God had to stop them to the point where they could not move forward. They could not advance. They could not see any other blessing. God stopped them and he made them wander in the wilderness. Have you ever been in a point in life where you just felt like, You're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again to the point where you feel like there is no, you're just spinning your tires. There is no progression. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. For the children of Israel, he stopped them because they didn't believe. Their heart did not trust in him. And he stopped them and Most of them died in that wilderness. They spent 40 years uh, in the wilderness wandering the same area, passing the same landmarks, doing the same things. And for 40 years, that generation died, except for two. Two people stayed faithful. Uh, We know the first one, Joshua, Joshua being the heir. Uh, Good morning, Miss Nikki. Uh, We know that uh, Joshua being the... uh, the heir to the leadership of the children of Israel after Moses. And Joshua was the servant of Moses. And he he did all that he could to find out who the God of Moses was. And when Moses was trying to get close to God, Joshua was there trying to see who this God was and trying to learn and, and always build that relationship. And then Caleb. Caleb, that old man of faith. Caleb didn't waver in his faith. No matter what everyone else was saying, no matter what the trend was at that time, Caleb, Caleb had in his mind the promise that God had given him. And Caleb, at, at an old age, when, when Joshua was leader, said, I want that mountain. That promise that God gave me way back when Moses was in leadership, I tell you what, I still, I'm still holding on to it. And uh, those two men were the only two that got to go into the promised land. He says, verse number 17, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? Verse 19 says this, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now I want to bring in uh, some some application here and then I'll, I'll let you go for the morning. But the first thing that I really want to point out to us is now is the time. Let's not wait until we say, well, maybe I'll start dedicating my heart to God when when the the shelter in place is over. I'll start going to church when shelter in place is over. No, now is the time. I'll start reading my Bible when when I I, I have the when, when all this is over. No, now is the time. I'll start caring. Uh, after all this is over. No, now, today, today, 
You aren't guaranteed tomorrow. You're guaranteed right now. And so do all you can right now. Well, uh, but what about me? No, no, no. Don't be caught up in the deceitfulness of sin. Today. Today, hear the voice of God. Today, do those things that, 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 that those opportunities to serve him and to, 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 to build upon what he's given you. Today. Then the second thing that I want to point out to us by way of application is to understand that the most wicked thing that we can do is not believe in God. Say, well, pastor, I just, I, I just can't believe. I can't. I just have a hard time believing. No. You see, we can. We all have doubt. That's natural. In fact, part of faith is doubt. But here's here's what happens when we have that doubt. Uh, we sing a song within our church. We trust and obey. You see, what, what happens is uh, we, we have this doubt and we still take those steps forward, even though we're not quite sure that this it, it's going to happen for us. It, it always reminds me of the, the three Hebrew children right before they were going into the fiery furnace uh, and, and they were standing before King Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, he said I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to bow before me or bow before my, my idol and worship. And they said, we're not careful to answer you. God will save us. And then they said a, a, a phrase that is probably one of my favorite phrases that I, I don't know how many times I say within my own Christian life. But if not, <laughs> but if not, I'm still, I, I, we're still going to trust him. And that how important it is for us to trust him. You say, well, I just have a hard time believing. Well, no, 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 no. You trust anyway. And if we don't trust can I tell you, that's you choosing not to. It's your choice. Uh, I, uh, here's a, a, a quote from Charles Spurgeon. He says, uh, unbelief is not that we simply cannot believe. It's a choice not to believe. It becomes a crime and a misery within our faith. How, how necessary it is for us to believe and trust in God, even when we doubt. Lastly, I, I think it's so important for us as we see the necessity of today, as we see the importance of, of believing God. Lastly, I, I want to point out that how important it is for us to check our hearts. I've known a lot of people that on the outside, they look like great Christians. Oh, they know exactly the words to say and they know the smile, how to put the smile and, and say the joke right at the right time and to say the right things. But if your heart's not right, can I tell you something? You're fake. Today is the day to get that right. How many of those children of Israel knew exactly what to say, but in their heart, didn't believe. Their fathers didn't believe after seeing all that, that had happened. And now we're starting to see that in the, in the next generation. Uh, let it not be said of our generation right now, of our people right now, that we are people that just didn't believe. Because what kept them from not entering into his rest. Was it their sin? No. Sin was something that was ever going to be with them. Was it their lack of works? No. It had nothing to do with their works. It had everything to do with their heart. Their heart wasn't in it. And because their heart wasn't in it, they lost out. 
this morning, I, I, I hope we'd take inventory of our heart. And I hope we can get to the place where we don't become like the children of Israel. And as we see as God saved us and we see God working in our lives and, and bringing blessing and, and, and health and bringing uh, just a provision and protection within our lives. I hope we don't harden our hearts just because things are difficult. And I hope that we can fix our heart and take inventory to say, Lord, I want to trust in you. I want to, I want to believe in you. And maybe that's something that we do. Uh, even, even the saved Christians, maybe it's something that we say, you know what, this is what I, I, I need to rededicate my heart to you. And how important that is for us this, this morning. And I uh, hope this was a help to you. And uh, uh, have a good day today. Make sure, let, let's look to encourage someone this, this morning and uh, uh, exhort them. Give them a call, maybe uh, uh, write, a, write some letters, uh, send some emails. But let's be an encouragement to someone today. Maybe your neighbor, maybe they're, they're struggling, maybe they need something and you have a little extra. Let, let's be a blessing to them. But uh, uh, let's seek to be an encouragement to those around us. I love you. I'm so thankful we get to be uh, together. And uh, let's remember to pray for one another. Look for the comments to see different requests on a regular basis. And uh, Wednesday, I'm, I'm planning to do another Q&A on Wednesday. And so if you have any questions or anything that you want answered for uh, Wednesday morning uh, devotions, would you just, you can message them to me personally. You can email them to the church at victorybaptist.outlook.com. Or you can uh, uh, just write them down here um, on the, uh, uh, the comments here. And we'll make sure we... Uh, uh, get them answered. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then I'll let you go for the day. Heavenly Father, I thank you now for the word of God. I thank you for God's people that uh, they tune in regularly, and um, Lord, wow, it's an encouragement to me, but Lord, I pray that God's word encourages them and lifts them up and builds them in their faith. Lord, I thank you so much for all the many answered the prayer that we've seen so far, and Lord, I'm praying that we can meet uh, meet again here soon and be able to uh, gather together as a church yet again. Lord, I, I want to I wanna be in prayer for all of our uh, nurses and, and healthcare uh, people, those that are working within the, the uh, grocery stores and uh, um, those that are working in, uh, we call them essential areas within our day-to-day our -day life. Uh, Lord, I pray that you protect them, keep them safe, uh, keep them healthy. And uh, Father, I also pray for our people that you would provide and that you would uh, um, uh, allow us to have the things that we need and that are uh, necessary. And uh, Father, I also pray that you would bring to us uh, great prosperity as we come out of this, this situation. We love you, praise you for all that you've done. And uh, we look to uh, glorify your name yet again uh, today in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And uh, to remember tomorrow, 10 a.m., we'll be back. We'll have our coffee check and everything here uh, tomorrow. And so uh, I will see you then. God bless.